We are live on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Welcome to this week's Flip for Nar. Got my partner crime with me again. Live. So go ahead and load your questions immediately. And uh, we can get rocking and rolling on this week's uh, Flippinar. So again, we are live on YouTube, uh, Facebook, and Instagram. I'm trying Instagram stories out. So hopefully uh, we're, we're, uh, we don't have a hit, a hit there. Uh, let me go ahead and add the link over at flippinar.com. One second, people. How's it going, AP? It's going. It's going. It's going. No complaints. No complaints. No complaints. So, again, everybody, you can start loading your questions. We'll uh, get right into them. But if this is your first experience with this format, what we do here is we answer questions about wholesaling houses or just real estate in general and your opportunity to get your questions answered live with uh, Adria and myself, Ty A.K., the flip man. So um, I guess I need to turn this tube down in the background. Adria, you didn't even tell me. Uh, so we got questions on Instagram already. You, you, you good on Instagram? Yep. Okay. Good on Instagram. So do your thing. And... Facebook is giving me some issues, but I'll figure that out as I go. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, Shouts out from Palm Beach, Florida, Grand Rapids, Hollywood Hills. We've got a lot of different places. So just jumping right into it on Instagram. Um, Web BRMR says, Flipman, I was right about the first time you said, AKA the Flipman. Um, Okay. Hey, just text me. Uh, hit me up again, man. I still got your text from last week, and uh, I got something for you. All right. You heard that. Uh, let's see here. The True Master on Instagram says he's been waiting seven days and two minutes for this. All right. I oh, wow. That's what's happening, man. Oh, wow. Okay. Let's see here. On YouTube, we'll go with that first question. It's going to be from Andrea Penn. Um, she says, would you say that it would be smart to wholesale outside of your state? Thank you for your help. Uh, well, if you can turn some deals, yes, ma'am. Uh, the biggest thing is um, if you got any type of support on the market that you're targeting, that's going to be the, the number one factor there is uh, support there, whether it's through another wholesaler that you've uh, networked with um or just someone that you actually know so um i guess the question i would would ask is what what city are you in what what's wrong with the city where you're located if it's a very small town i can understand but if it's a city of any significant size um i would strongly recommend starting there um but what do i know Okay, um, and to answer the syndicator on Instagram, I'm reading questions from Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. So all three platforms. Okay, um, so if you have a question, go ahead and post it. Um, his question was, I'm in Hollywood Hills, California. Do you think I can wholesale out here? Oh, most definitely. Why, why couldn't you? Uh, couldn't you wholesale there? Do people die in Hollywood? What, what's the name of the town? Hollywood Hills. Hollywood Hills. Do people die in Hollywood Hills? Do they get divorced? Do they lose their job or income? Do you think you have some tired landlords there? Do they relocate? Um, medical bills or issues? Kids going off to college or just school tuition in general? Those are just some of the common reasons why someone will be motivated to sell. So I know the answer is yes to all of those questions. So that simply means yes, you will have motivated sellers in Hollywood Hills, California, your job as a wholesaler is to let them know that you exist. It's that simple. All right. What's up, Manuel on Facebook and Mr. Rodriguez? 
Sticking with the question from Baltimore, Aaliyah Johnson says, how do we find deals for commercial properties? Baltimore, I was in Baltimore last Friday in B more. Get a lot of opportunity up in that DMV area, man. Oh my God. I'm going to see by some of it too. But uh, but to, uh, she said, how do you find commercial deals? Now commercial is vast. What what are you what are you looking for? Are you trying to do multifamily? Are you trying to do uh, self-storage, uh, single tenant, uh, retail strips, um, hotels, motels? Um, uh, what do they call it? Not uh, hardware, but um, industrial. Uh, it goes on and on with uh, commercial. So it depends on what you're actually trying to do as far as trying to find actual deals. Then that will let you know what, you, what you're trying to do with it. You're trying to hold it for yourself or you're trying to do a quick flip through via wholesaling. So uh, a question, but it, it, it depends. You got to be a little bit more direct. All right. Um, Dwayne Wave on Instagram says, what's the best way to market and target specific neighborhoods? And how do you compete with bandit signs already in place? And that's from Philadelphia, PA. Oh, that's a good thing, in my opinion. If you already see bandit signs, um, yours should be in the mix. Um, it's that simple. Um, you you want to put them in the same areas and sometimes on even the same pole uh, in some cases or whatever, but you still have to think outside the box. Uh, obviously, that's a very, well, not, it may not be obvious to you, but if you see them, that guys are not wasting their time and money by putting them up, but um that's a very effective way to find deals not the only way direct mail works um uh, also with that same list you can produce phone numbers from a direct uh, from an absentee list uh that's very effective you know it's a little tedious but uh it's probably one of the more cost effective ways of doing it but it is a little time consuming uh but you put your resources in place to make that happen. So those are just a couple of, those are the top three ways in my opinion of finding deals. And you can always look online. Uh, that's a different process because they are already being advertised for sale. Um, but you can also target properties that are being advertised for rent, you know, try to uh, transition or uh, re-engineer some of those into being actual deals where you may run into a tired landlord and they want an actual sale because no matter what form of market, from my experience, uh, no form, no matter what form of marketing that you do, the biggest group of individuals that are going to contact you about selling a property is going to be tired landlords. So you can be a little proactive and reach out to landlords that are actually trying to rent existing properties um, offline and out, offline and, and online. All right, Mr. Rodriguez on Facebook says hello to everyone. And he wants to know, where would I get a tax delinquent list from? Well, uh, each county, each state is going to be different on that. I know here, I just simply go down to the tax collector's office and pay for it. Um, go up to the counter and pay for it. So that's what I would recommend that you do. You just go down to your county courthouse and either the tax assessor or tax collector, whatever is turned in your market. And um, just ask someone, they'll be able to direct you to that. Maybe online, and you can just pay for it. But um, that's that's probably where I would start. Just do a search online for the county that you want to target. All right, eyes on YouTube is AKA Lashonda from Kansas City wants to know how do you fill out your contracts when you are doing a co wholesale transaction, where you have a contract with the seller and someone brings you a buyer, not a JV yours i right, read that again somebody slipped text me about a, a deal here but um, uh, how do you fill out your contracts when you are doing a co-wholesale transaction where you have a contract with the seller and someone brings you a buyer not a jv yours is what she says oh now if i if i if i so they're saying if i have a property on the contract with a seller mm -hmm. um well, if a, if a um, wholesaler wants to produce a buyer for me, um, I, I have to be really confident that you know, they have a buyer ready to go. I'm just not going to allow them to tie up my property and, to, and then they go find a buyer. 
Um, they have to, I'll give them uh, instructions on how to buy, buy or can uh, view the property. Normally, we're going to send over a video where they can, you know, that'll somewhat get the interest up. And then, um, uh, and then I'll, um, and then we'll go from there. So once it's, it's, I'm confident that there's a deal in place, then I'll do a contract with them or whatever, you know, whatever price. Um, but I'm only going to give them a few days to close. I'm not going to give them a long time to tie my property. When I say a few days, 10 max, 10 total days, not 10 business days, 10 total days max. So but I'm, I'm, I'm going to treat them just like a buyer toward the paperwork. You know, it just needs to be in the chain. All right. Just recognizing some of our viewers here as y'all are still logging on. We have Orlando, North Carolina, uh, Fort Worth, Texas, South Kakalaki. Keep signing in, y'all, and posting your questions, and I'll do my best to get to as many as I can. Um, but going back to Instagram, jram1222 says, watch 10 of your videos and downloaded your contract. I already have a house under contract just from watching videos. Mentorship in two weeks. It works. What's up? From Sacramento, California. Sac Town. Let's get it. All right. Um, sticking with YouTube. It's Dexter. Says he sent out my first batch of postcards and got my first call today. He's not looking to sell, but to buy. I'm excited. Way to go, Dexter. Way to go. Yeah. Oh, still sticking with YouTube. Come on. Let's see here. When a seller calls ready to sell, do most ask for proof of funds? If so, where can I get the letter for cheap? What can I get a proof of funds letter for cheap? Yep. Um, well. <laughs> The real POF is the one that I, I'm affiliated with. You don't have to get it from there, so I don't know. Any, I don't know what someone else offers, uh, but real POF dot com. Go there, listen to my little spiel. Then you submit your name and phone number, and the next page tap. And Keith will explain, you know, what's offered. You know, they do. They will offer you a sample letter. So, um, I, I consider it cheap, but you know, I know everybody's pockets are not the same, so. All right, let's see here. Jody Ross asks, when doing a double close, should the title for the property be in my name? And if the realtor is involved, can I use your contract instead of? Oh, Adrian got knocked off. Uh, what happened? You got knocked off of YouTube, Adrian. So, um, she got knocked off of YouTube. So, we'll wait for her to come back. Uh, hold on a second. But uh, to answer that question, I think I got the last part of it is that you're going to, if an agent is involved, is involved you're going to have to use the, um, the agent's contract. It's not going to be any way around that for sure. So, um just just to answer the actual question um as far as the double close you know within the chain of the double close that means you're going to take a uh, title uh, the title is going to go in your name for you know whatever short period of time um short period of time um let me see if i can get adria back on here But um, anyway, so um, let me uh, look at the next question. I'll try to pull one from. Pull one from YouTube while we're trying to wait for her to get back on here. So guys, now she has this in <laughs> better. I'm going to put it from Instagram. I'm, I'm sorry, from Facebook. Now she has it in better. She's more organized on this because I have to look at it or whatever. So excuse the technical difficulties. Um, all right, Carlos from um, from Facebook says, um, just got a new software. Uh, uh, 
says he can help me do something in my market. Not sure what he means by that. So let me go back to uh, Insta, I mean to Facebook, I mean to YouTube. This bad weather's guy, we're gonna try to get my girl back up here. <sighs> All right, on um on YouTube. Uh, it's Dexter, 1994, so he sent out his first um, batch of postcards and got my first call today. He's not looking to sell, but to buy. I'm excited. Say, where to go, man? Uh, that's some action. Uh, Andrea in uh, Nashville, she followed up. She said she was in Nashville. And uh, can, yes, you can correct start there. Yeah, you can. Nashville is a uh, a really good market, you know, which all are to me. Just some may be better than others. So <laughs> you uh, you can uh, have your feel of deals there in Nashville, uh, Andrea. So you need to just dive into that and make that happen there in Nashville. So um, my girl is off on both of them right now. So hopefully I can get her back up here in a sec. All right, we're going to go with the uh, next question. I was just trying to text her. So, guys, bear with me on it. Um, we're still live on Instagram, too. So, all right, the next question here um, from Eyes, Lissandra and Casey. Uh, how do you fill out your contract when you are doing a whole – okay, I think we read that one, my bad. Um Someone says he has a dude still in their signs and he will place in front of mine a headache. Oof, yeah, that is a headache. I've, I've had that to hurt that to happen. Uh, AP, <laughs> AP's uh, laptop is updating in the middle of this, so that's cool. Though. We'll we'll work it out. All right. Um, All right, Michael Spence says, what up, Ty? I've uh, been driving around for dollars and found some vacant homes. After doing the research, I found that a couple of them were owned by LLCs uh, from different cities. Should I still pursue those? Um, you can, uh, more than likely. Uh, well, those are investors, and it's going to be a little bit more difficult to do deals with. But if they're vacant, then they may they may be motivated to sell. So, you know, sending them out a letter, um, you never know. Uh, I would probably go ahead and do it if you don't have anything else going on as far as trying to generate leads, most definitely. All right. Um, Uh, D boy sounds says, uh, to double close or not, I don't want the buyer knowing my feet. All right. Uh, I'm going to, you can do it however you want, but you, you want relationships in this business. If you have a buyer and they're tripping about how much you make you, that's a buyer you really don't want to deal with. You want repeat buyers. And so repeat buyers don't care what you make as long as they're getting the number that works for them. You're thinking about it in the wrong way, in my opinion. Um, so trying to hide your fee, you know, you don't want to deal with guys that are concerned about how much money you're making, you know, as long as they're getting what they want out of the deal. All right. Uh, Royster said, what's shaking? Flip man and Adrian, because Adrian is not here right now. Her uh, laptop is updating in the middle of this. Um me. 
All right. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Brian, somebody, uh, I guess he's making a statement, pole stop signs, yield signs, et cetera, wire ties are best for me. I, uh, I concur, totally agree. Uh, Devin Davis says, how do you go about uh, getting into virtual wholesaling? Well, in my opinion, uh, you're in Memphis, uh, my question would be, Devin, are you already doing deals in Memphis? Uh, I would need to know that answer first. All right, uh, Jasmine says, uh, hey, Flip Man, I recently came across nine residential vacant lots and land, nonetheless, the ARV for the properties in the subdivision uh, is 365,000. I've heard from real estate agents that I can't uh, base residential. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, I guess what's the question is as far as the nine vacant commercial lot, if it's in a subdivision, is it still, are they still developing in that subdivision would be my question to you before I could attempt to answer that for you. All right, uh, Arthur. 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 Um, Arthur question was, uh, what's a good way to find investors and cash buyers for my contracts? Um, the, the best way, uh, Arthur, is uh, starting with great deals. Um, Um, it, it, it started with, uh, with great deals. Hold on a second. I'm trying to get my girl back on here, but started with, um, with great deals is the, uh, the first thing. If you advertise those great deals, buyers are going to call you. It's really that simple. Focus on finding great deals, and the buyer side of it is, is simple. Um, and like I even could say easy and compared to sellers. So if you do an effective job of normal finding great deals and then do an effective job of uh, letting people know they exist, you won't have any issues with um, with with uh, finding buyers for your actual deals, and that will allow you to build your uh, buyers list. All right, uh, Kasha Shaw says, can you recommend a buyer in Atlanta? Um, uh, Kasha, uh, if I'm saying that, I'm sorry, Keisha. Uh, I thought that was the name, Keisha. Keisha Shaw, uh, is it a, what, what are the numbers on your deal? What's the price and what's the ARV, you know, in order for me to help you with that question? All right, um, Viva says, when I'm researching a home to purchase, what am I uh, looking for exactly to know if it could be a good deal? Well, Viva, uh, there's a formula that you can use and I have videos on it, but I'm gonna go through it here. You can uh, fill in the holes with those videos on my channel. Is that um, you need to know the ARV first. So that simply means, it, the acronym means after repair value or what will the house appraise for in excellent condition. So that must be figured out first. What would the house appraise for in excellent condition after repairs are done? Okay, so once you determine you time that time 70% minus the repairs, minus your fee, I like to double that times two. As an example, say the ARV is $100,000. All right, you figured out it is $100,000. So um, we time it time 70%, so that's $70,000. We'll just say the repairs are, are $15,000. All right, and you may not know what those are, just you can make up a number. I say normally go with 15 or 20. Those are going to be some conservative numbers, maybe more, maybe less. 
You can always plug in there because the formula is not a set in stone offer. It's just to prevent you from wasting a lot of time. Uh, that's that's the purpose of the formula more than anything. All right, so we're going to use 15,000. So you subtract that from the 70,000. Now you're at 55. So you want to make 10 grand on the deal. So time this times two, that's 20. Subtract the 20,000 from the 55 and you're at 35. So boom, there you go. Again, I would probably offer you less than that 35 and see what's the best number I can get if they don't give me a price that works or they force me into making an offer. My goal is to get them to give me their least amount. Sometimes you can't do that. But that's how you determine if you have a good not good deal or not, Viva. Viva. All right. So are you back? Hold on, let me see my girl back here. Okay, hold on, hold on, guys. Lazarus has arisen. <laughs> You're back. I'm back. Oh, hey, hey, she's back, guys. Oh my God! Wow. I do apologize. I apologize, everyone. I'm so sorry about that. So let me oh get my you goodness. back over here. That was a problem. Yeah. What happened? I just shut down on me, and then it was like it was taking forever. It wouldn't just quickly log back on. I even manually filed it down. It was just not being kind to me today. Okay. That's all right. Cool. I told the to me. <laughs> so, so, so um, I stopped on, uh, I might have skipped one or two, but it's cool. They can repost. I stopped on, uh, let me see. I don't know where I stopped. Oh, wow. Uh, let me see. Where did I stop? Well, it must okay, have been. I, stop, I stopped on uh, Jasmine. Let me see. I stopped on. Uh, Jasmine Rodriguez? Yeah, stop on, yeah, go there. I'll, if you repeat it, I'll let you know if I've already answered, but yeah, go there. Okay, you heard him, guys. He's not going to chop my head off if I read the same question twice, so I'll work my way up from the bottom. Let's see here. Since you were speaking of ARVs, thank you, Michael Spence. You understand the struggle? Yeah, he was. Oh, he said you were struggling. Ooh, so oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Hey, hey. That's why I got you, man. I'm trying to make this go a lot more smoother than what it's been. I'm sitting up there trying to read. I got to read it first, you know what I mean? Because there might be some foolishness up there. You're going to always have that or whatever. So I have to read it first. So, you know, both day. Okay. So, do you get an ARV from an inspector, contractor, or appraiser? I think you just answered that. Did you answer that? No, nah, no, nah, I didn't. Well, I did. I actually did answer. And, you know, that wasn't a question. But I did actually answer it, you know. Oh. Yeah. All right. Um, what's up, Flipman? Have someone call me from a bandit sign. She has a mortgage on the property, but has been staying in the house for 10 years. Tax assessment is 274. How do I approach the situation? She is motivated. Um, well, he didn't give us what she owes on the property, did he? Nope, didn't see that. Yeah, we, we, have, we have to know that. She can be motivated all she wants. If she owes a certain amount, it, it won't make a difference. All right. And let's see here. Should I go after homes that are in pre-foreclosure? There was an unpaid balance on the house. Uh, yeah, uh, if that's your thing, uh, understand that if you're going to try to go through a pre-foreclosure and the equity is not there to make it a deal, then... Uh, you're going to have to make it a deal by the short sale process, which can take some time. So, um, um, so yeah, uh, you, you can do that. Uh, you can focus on pre foreclosure. Hopefully they already have enough equity there where, um, you don't, uh, you don't have to go through that process. All right. Um, QJU95 Instagram. Hey, flip man, you have allowed me to educate myself in wholesaling. You made me hungry for some money. Do you think Philadelphia is a good area to make some money wholesaling? Oh, most definitely. You know, you're talking a city of that size, 
And I, I just answered that about what what was city were we talking about where I went through Not sure, but are there people dying? Are there landlords tired of Yeah, you know, the people die there, or the tired landlords, do people get divorced, do people lose their job or income, medical bills, kids going out to college or just tuition in general. All of those issues and more will create motivated sellers. Your job is to become an effective marketer so they know you exist and the, and the deals will flow your way. So, you know, so there's a lot of problems in Philadelphia, I'm sure, that will create motivated sellers. You just have to do an effective job of letting them know you exist. Okay, just if you can hear me, Facebook, I haven't had a question on there since before I got logged off. I see a long one here, a statement or something by uh, uh, Brett Mullins. You okay. don't see that? Mm -mm. I'll refresh that. Don't worry about that. Um, the question on Instagram. So my first potential seller said that closing is covered through the bank, through her dad's bank. How would that work? Their dad passed away and they want a warranty deed. Who all signs the contract? Well, if, if a dad passed away, then hopefully there's a will. But if it isn't, there is a process that you can go through to make that happen but the seller's not going to control where the deal is closed at, you know, that's, you know, you walk away from them. You, you got to control that. You know, the only way this stuff works and works consistently is that number one, you have a motivated seller, but you have control over your motivated seller. Um, and that's where it just has to start and you're going to control. Well, you may not control where it's going to be closed because your buyer may do that, but your seller can't control where it's being closed. You can't give them that much power. Now, now anything is negotiable. Let me let me make sure that. But if the, if the seller is choosing the attorney or whoever to close it, they're working in, in their favor, and it may not work out in your favor. So I'm going to strongly uh, advise against that. That could be a deal. I mean, it'll be a deal breaker for me. Don't be afraid to walk away. You know, plenty of opportunities out there. No, it may not seem like it, but there it, it is. There are. Okay, I'm sure you've had quite a few people come on since I got booted. So take a minute, do some house cleaning. And while you're doing that, um, go ahead and put where they can get bandit signs. I see two questions in regards to that and who they can contact. Oh, you, you, know, you, know where to, you know where to get that information on the bandit sign? Dirt cheap? Yeah, yeah. Just put their phone number up in the, in the thing or whatever. Okay. I'm getting that free pub. But... Yeah, um, if you this your first op, you know, chance, uh, your first encounter, or you're discovering me, um, and <laughs> I owe 200 <laughs> videos on YouTube to tell you everything about wholesaling houses on my YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe and uh, turn on the notifications so you are alerted whenever new videos are uploaded. And when we go live, uh, just like every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Inst Eastern on this particular Flipinar. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at flipman.net, flipman, D-O-T-N-E-T, -E um, and then on Twitter, uh, the flipman, and then yeah, on our Snapchat also, flipman.net, uh, flipman, D-O-T-N-E-T. -E um, if you need a coach, along with step-by-step -step courses on wholesaling houses, wholesaling apartments, and flipping vacant commercial buildings, you can go over to flipman.net and look into what that costs. And you get me coaching you along with the courses. So enough of that. Back to regular programming. I'm sorry, guys. That question from Brett Mullins was, uh, hey, Flipman, love the videos on YouTube. I texted you last week about your courses and have a couple more questions. What kind of format do you get? Do you get the step-by-step -step course? How long do we have you as a coach? And at checkout, is there a place we put our information? Thanks for everything you do. Um, what was the first question? Uh, what kind of format do you get? Do you give the step-by-step -step course? Well, you, you, you'll receive access with an account login. So each course, which I recommend, you're using a different email address because your browser may get confused and you log in and get logged back into the same course. So you get them just in a, in a module setting. So you have module one through whatever the number is, depending on the course. 
So you can access that information through your, uh, obviously, PC or laptop, a tablet or smartphone, wherever you have internet access. So you listen to it at your own pace. You know, so I'm sitting there, you know, telling you, you know, from A to Z, from step by step, and the way I design the courses as if you didn't know anything about real estate. So, so that's the courses. Now with the coaching, um, I answer the phone seven days a week. You know, I'm not hard to reach. Uh, my students, um, I'm not hard to reach. You know, uh, obviously I have a little life. Obviously I have a business that I run, but once you're locked in, um, I'm not hard to reach. So um, it's that simple. I think I, uh, in the famous words of Frank Lucas from American Gangster, I think I have a product that's less expensive than the competition and better than the competition. So what are we selling? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to clean the fifth on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, boy. The syndicator on Instagram asks, do you always order in, an inspection on deals and who is responsible for getting that done? You or the buyer? Uh, neither. You never order inspections. Um, it, it doesn't take much to understand a general idea of what the repairs will be. Sometimes you'll miss some stuff or whatever, but for the most part, it, you know, most stuff sticks out like a sore thumb. Sometimes you may see some foundation issues or whatever, but that's part of the negotiation that can be repaired in most cases. So to answer your question, no, no, no inspector is used from you or your cash buyer. Most of the cash buyers are experienced and experienced and they don't they don't need those. Second question from the syndicator, what's up with all the superhero shirts you wear? Oh um back to um a guy on the uh he said on the checkout, yeah your information will go in the checkout. Whenever you make a whenever you uh um uh sign up uh, I'll get an alert that you sign up, but if you hadn't, you, it, it's best that you reach out to me because I won't know who it is unless I've already conversated with you or whatever. So uh, as far as putting in your information, but he said, what's up with the super uh, superhero t-shirts? Well, I tried to um, uh, wear something different as we, as you can see or uh, whatever. So uh, I was spending a little bit more money with some of the other stuff I was buying or whatever. So I want to scale that back or whatever. Cause I don't, you know, I'm not a closed guy for real or whatever. So, uh, then I just, you know, I found the source where I can get, I can walk in and get these, not going to promote them here, but, uh, Hey, so I have my pick of the litter of these. So, and then I'm a huge you know, I'm a kid when it comes to that stuff. All those movies that come out, I'm there, you know, that Friday when they come out. You know, I don't go to Thursday nights, but I'll go to Fridays. You know, Batman, Superman, uh, all the Marvels, uh, Wolverine, X-Men, Spider-Man, Hulk, uh, Captain America, you name it. Then I watch The Flash on, uh, that's the CW that it comes on, whatever channel it comes on, I watch it, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Hey. Um, uh, what is his name? Um, um, what is, uh, damn. Don't know. <laughs> hey, Somebody posted what his, what his name is, is, um, um, something Gordon. Um, Flash Gordon? No, no. Ed no. Gordon? Ned Gordon? No, 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 no. I'll think about it, but somebody will post it in there. Uh, what is, what his real name is, the Flash? Mm-hmm. All right, so Colin wants to know on Instagram, how or when did you get into wholesaling? Did you have a mentor? And what did you do before wholesaling? Oh, wow. Um, now, before I, we started doing the flippinars in this format, I used to um, do them where I would go through all of that. So I'll go through the uh, Cliff Snow's version of that. Um, um, Focus, man. Focus. I want to see what's the name of this Flash character, man. Somebody said Barry Allen? Bar Barry Allen. Yeah, Barry, Barry Allen. Allen. <laughs> there it is. God darn it. Yeah, Barry Allen. Okay, how did I get started in this stuff? I'm an entrepreneur first. All right. Um, 
I don't know where I got the bug, but you know, I, I wasn't one of these kids that grew up, you know, selling lemonade or uh, trash bags door to door and just always been that way. It came to me in my early 20s when I was in college. Um, one of the first things that I did was a uh, mobile car wash. Uh, I'm sorry, let me back up. One of the first things I did is I had to bring an idea that I would get a, a car deal, automobile dealer's license, use some of my student loan money and um, become a millionaire by buying used cars at an auction and reselling them. Got, uh, got my hat handed to me, you know, because you need to be in mechanically inclined when you go to those uh, auto dealer auctions. They will make a 20 year old car look brand new off the showroom, but it will be a piece of junk. So, uh, got uh, my hat handed to me in that business, got out of it. Uh, fast forward to 1995, uh, Daytona Beach weekend. My brother, uh, two of my cousins, and one of my brother's friends, we all rode, drove down to Daytona Black Beach weekend. And uh, one of my brother's friends was up, you know, he drove up from Orlando. And he had uh, been in the mobile car wash business. He said he was making six figures doing it. So I couldn't wait till we got back to Birmingham. And I bought a baby blue uh, 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 passenger van where the seats were already taken out for 900 bucks. Bought a 100 gallon wash, uh, uh, tank for water. I bought a pressure washer and a sign to, for marketing whatever we were on location and boom, we were in business. So me, my, my cousin and a, a high school friend of ours, you know, we were showing up on uh, uh, places that people that I knew where they worked and, you know, we would just get business, show up at hair, uh, hair salons, uh, barbershops and boom, we, we, we were killing it. So that was the summer of 95, very hot then, but we were cool with that. So when the fall rolled around and the first morning we I woke up and it was in the fifties or forties, now that's cold for here, you know what I'm saying? Especially when you got water splashing around. Knew that I couldn't do that. You know, I was out of that business, you know, within six months, I guess you would say. So fumbled around with some multi-level network marketing stuff. Uh, the last one that I was in, and I'm not I was horrible at that stuff, uh, was uh, prepaid legal, which I think is called Legal Shield now. And um, one of my friends uh, and his now wife. <laughs> <laughs> Why you not know, man? <laughs> hey, one of my friends and his now wife. <laughs> hey, one of my friends and his now wife were going to school to become real estate agents, and um, and uh, the guy that normally taught the class, he didn't talk about uh, becoming a real estate agent. He talked about investing in real estate, and. Um, the substitute, that's what the substitute talked about. The guy who was there was there. So the substitute talked about this. So my friend, knowing the mindset that I have, he told me about some of the things the guy was talking about. I didn't know what he was talking about. It was interesting. That was in October 2002. Fast forward to December 27th. I was at my mom's house for Christmas. I was up one early one morning. I saw, I waited on her to prepare some breakfast. She uh, preparing biscuits and syrup, my favorite, um, still to this day. Uh, really don't eat that much of because I don't, you know, uh, she's not pretty much able to do that kind of stuff anymore. But uh, anyways, so I saw one of Carter Sheets uh, infomercials and he was talking about no money down techniques. And, you know, you saw the commercials. Some of you guys may be too young for that, but you can Google them or probably on YouTube see some of his old stuff. But, you know, on the infomercials, the only thing they're saying, some of the seminars, I made this much money, I made this much money, I made this much money, but they don't tell you how they made the money. But I caught it about halfway through the program. I went up to Dow, found it, you know, the full 30 minutes, and uh, I thought to myself at the end of it, uh, he can't be lying about all of this. So I waited until I got back to Birmingham. Long story short, I ended up buying a bootleg course and um, put out some banded signs. 30 days later, I closed my first deal, made $2,500. March, uh, I think March 5th, 2003, and the rest is history. I wish I had some crickets right about now. Just just some crickets. I, I was trying to look for some on my phone. You, you, your fan base said you, that's when you should have directed somebody to the 200 plus videos. Oh, that was somebody that was somebody said. <laughs> <laughs> I hate a man asked the question. I ain't told that story in a minute. 
Yeah, yeah you could have went back to one of the older flipper noirs, maybe like um, March, and uh, I, I would have, you know, you'd heard that story. So whatever. I appreciate. I won't, tell, I won't. I won't go through it again. I refer them to the videos. No, no, all. that's okay. I appreciate it because I will say that same little spiral bound bootleg Carlton sheet handbook is what he handed to me when I said I wanted to learn how to do what he was doing. Well, I, I actually didn't want to call the sheet, but it was Ron LeGrand, but point That was Carlton Sheets and no, Ron LeGrand. No, no, it was not. No, it was well, not. Like, gave me Ron LeGrand and then... No, I, no, no, no. I did order Carlton Sheets program, but I sent it back or whatever. I didn't I even... had one. Who's spiral... Eh, we're not going to go there. Yeah, it, it was another dude that I had ordered uh, I can't even remember his name. He the one uh, got me trying to advertise on TV, which was a waste of money or whatever. If you're doing that, you got to be doing more than wholesaling if you're going to advertise on exactly TV. Especially now, that was back then. Especially now, just too many more efficient ways to find deals or whatever. So, All yeah. right, let's see here. Let's go here. Jody has asked this question maybe 10 times. How do I get my cut if a realtor is involved in the deal? Well, dealing with a realtor, you have to understand that the realtor they have their um, they have their um, they have their um, uh, um, interest in in play. You you, you got to understand that. So um, so they're going to want um, that they're, they're going to want earnest money, and they're going to want um, proof of funds. So if you got those things in place and you can get a, a deal, create a great deal with a listed property, then you'll get paid the same way you normally would get paid. You produce a cash buyer and um, you get paid the same way. Then the realtor get their money through the seller. It, it still works the same way. Once you get once you get an actual contract with the seller and a contract with the buyer, you, you're still going to control all of that. So it works the same way. All right. Lauren Cole says, do you think we should do one city focus on our city and the next closest big city or have, what should your focus be? Well, do start doing, if you're in a decent sized city, start doing deals in your city. Um, if, if you can accomplish that, then yeah, then you, you expand or wherever, you know, you, you worked out the kinks of putting actual deals together uh doing deals in another city understand you gotta have somebody on the ground whether it's another wholesaler um maybe even a real estate agent which may be difficult to find or someone that you just actually know but you gotta have somebody on the ground just to do the tedious stuff if nothing else but keeping the seller and the buyer apart from each other all right no not really apart but someone to in, at least be there when they meet each other, because there's, it's going to be rare that buyers will buy a property without seeing it first. All right. Um, Richard Williams in Fayette, North Carolina, asked, should I attack or be aware of double wide mobile homes? I come across these opportunities often in my area. Yeah, you 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 need to um, definitely, you know, look into those. And if there's some opportunities there, um, it, now, a mobile home is like more like a car than a than a a, a house because they uh, go down in value every second, just like cars. So uh, then people have a title in hand. There's no closing process, so it's a timing issue. In most cases, you're gonna probably end up having to buy them and then you know pass them along to your buyer. Okay. Uh, Chris B wants to know: Have you? I'm sorry. That's Lenore Smith. Have you ever wholesaled a fire damaged home? Oh yeah, um, I did one in a um, in a, a subdivision that was built in 2011. I think it was back in uh, December of last year, and um, um, yeah, you know, uh, I think I had it on the contract for 55, wholesaled it for 58, but you know it was it was burnt up. You know, it was sitting there, it was a, a serious eyesore sitting in that, that nice neighborhood or whatever. So, but to answer your question, yeah. Okay, Colt Jr. says, can you turn the camera on, on IG? Is, how's, what's the camera on IG? Can I turn it on? Yeah, he says, can you turn the camera on, IG? Um, 
don't know. Uh, clear that up for me. What is yeah, it? Yeah, uh, I guess people my idea, I'm assuming you all can see me, right? Have you, let, let, let them answer that. Okay. Um, Slick137 on Instagram, you got me motivated, Flip. I just don't know how to approach my sellers. How should I start the conversation off to sound like I know what I'm talking about? And he's been watching the videos. Well, with sellers, the, the thing that they need to know, number one, you never try to explain wholesaling to them. Just like you're struggling to understand it, you've actually been studying it. Are they saying they can see me on Instagram? Uh... Turn it the other way, you are sideways. You mean upside down? Says you're sideways. I don't know. Well, I, I did that intentionally. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, it is too late now. We're, we're too deep in it. I would have to okay. mess with it. But um, anyway, um, just just turn your phone. Um, so anyway, so I, I like to get the wide angle. That may not work on Instagram. We'll see whenever I look at the replay on it or whatever. But uh, anyway, so uh, whenever you're talking to sellers, uh, the only thing they need to know, now they have more questions, but this should answer all their questions, is that you buy houses as is, uh, which you pay cash, you close in two to four weeks, and you pay all closing costs minus any pay, any mortgage taxes or liens. Now, if you want to know what to ask, what questions need to be uh, that you should ask uh, sellers, is that just do a search for top 10 uh, questions to ask sellers, wholesaling houses or whatever. You'll see my video on that, which I go over. It's a couple of years old, but it's, it's still good. Okay. Um, Ms. Duncan asks, can the daughter of the owner be on the contract or does the name on the deed need to be on the contract or just let it come out in the title work? The house was passed down, but the owner is still alive. Um, now, who's, uh, if the if the daughter is the actual owner now, meaning that the property has been deeded over to her the proper way, then that's whose name needs to be on the contract. So wh whoever whoever is the actual owner needs to be on the contract. Now, if she has power of attorney uh, on the uh, owner. Uh, if she has power of, power of attorney. Uh, over the owner, then yeah, she can sign it and she'll sign it, whatever her name is, POA, which means power, which is power of attorney. Okay, I'm going to tie in an Instagram question and a YouTube question from Play Like a Cooper and Karen Banks. Play Like a Cooper says, what up, Ty? From Detroit, I was wondering what site could I use to try to find absentee owners of the vacant or abandoned homes? Karen Banks' concern was, I'm trying to contact owners of abandoned properties and frustrated by neighbors who do not know much about the neighbors because the houses have been abandoned for a few years. What should I do next? So I'm assuming that you all have the uh, information as for who owns it and a mailing address. If you have that, then boom, there you go. Um, you'll simply send out um, a mailer to them uh, if it's just a couple like that, normally I'll just send them FedEx or UPS. The more I can track better. And um, also, um, it increases uh, your chances of your message being read. It doesn't guarantee it, but it increases the chances of your message being read. Okay. Um, Hi, Flip Man. Double Doors Real Estate on Instagram wants to know, what should I say when a potential seller asks, how did I get their name and address? It's public record. Public record. All right, there you have it. Um, Chris B says, there's an old BJ's that's been empty for several years nearby. I got the comps for the area. How do I approach the broker for that plaza? How do I approach the broker to get an LOI over? Yeah, if he has the broker name and it's for sale, that's what he's saying? Essentially, yes. Well, yeah, they're going to entertain your call. They're trying to sell it. So um, whenever you call them, you get whatever general information about the property. And um, you should know when it, you ask them, how can you uh, email over? I'll get well. You'll get the email address and you know, tell them you'll be sending over an, an, an LOI, a letter of intent. 
that simple. They're trying to sell it. So you call them, you know, they're going to talk to you. They need to know what you need to sound. You need to sound like you know what you're talking about or whatever, because they'll easily brush you off. You know, commercial brokers, brokers are arrogant like that. So some of them. So. All right. I don't know if we've done a is it a deal question, but LaShonda has one from KC. The after repair value is forty five thousand. Repairs are fifteen. How much do I need to get this property for? What is the maximum amount you would offer, and how much would you sell it for? So, so what's the ARV? Forty five. And what's the oh wow? What's the price? Ah, uh, she's asking. What would you need to get the home at? But it does need well, about. What's she asking? Hmm? What is what's the price she asking? She's asking me what what she need to get the property for for it to be. Oh, oh, she asking me. I'm the, I All thought right. she meant to sell. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Um, but now, the ARV is only forty five. You know, man, wow, that's that's low. Um, and not even that low here. Um, you got to get that five or less to have a chance at the deal. Five grand or less. He said the repairs are what? 15. Yeah, we got to get it 5,000 or less. Okay. And, and, oh, she asked me what I would put it back out there. If yeah. I could, assuming I could get it for three, I would probably put it back out there at nine. Okay. There you go, LaShonda. Hope that helps you out. Um, Instagram, are you using wholesaling for any other strategies like rental properties, rehabs, or wholesaling? Well, now those are different. Those are different methods. When you start talking about lease options, you can wholesale a lease option. But as far as a rental, you know, I'm assuming you mean am I using it to find a deal for income? Uh, that that's a different process. Either you're going to buy it or the seller's going. Well, you're going to buy it regardless. But the seller um, is you're going to buy it with financing, or the seller would do some owner financing with the uh, with the rental. And what was the third one? Hoteling, what do you say? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's just a different animal altogether. I'm, I'm assuming you're referring to houses on the first two. But with hotels, that's just a different animal. I've never done a hotel deal before. Okay. Is there a video on how to assign a contract and tying it into Ms. I's question, um, how is there, would there be one on how to fill out the contract on a co-wholesale? Well, um, I, as I said, I, I have videos on both. Um, I have a video on how to fill out an assignment contract, which I rarely ever do. I don't, even though I get paid via an assignment fee, I don't use an assignment contract. Uh, but I do have a video on it. And then on co-wholesaling, I think I actually have a, one of the, a flippinar in the old format on, on that also. All right, guys, you're going to have to do some legwork. Look for those videos. Yeah. Steve James on Facebook says, what should I do with properties with back taxes on them? Um, well, uh, that may mean that be, uh, may be a, a, motiv a motivated seller behind those back taxes. The back taxes won't be an issue as long as they're less than the price that you need to make your deal work. But uh, that may mean there's some distress there if there's a uh, back taxes on a property. So there may be some opportunities there to uh, make some money. Uh, but again, the taxes need to be less than the price that you need for the, to make the deal work. Okay, Keisha Shaw says she needs some uh, ultimate, some clarification. Whose name goes on the contract? The person on the mortgage or the name on the deed? Name on the deed. There you go. Name on the deed goes on the contract. Because what will happen, the mortgage don't have to be selling, you know? Now, if they, now if they if they perform the transaction or transfer the deed from whoever the name the mortgage name is to whoever own, has the control or the name on the deed right now, if that was done correctly, then the mortgage still has to be sold, you know, regardless of who name is on the deed. So, assuming that the mortgage balance is less than the price that you need to make the deal work. All right, Julian Thompson on Facebook asks, is it common for real estate folks to have a lot of vacant homes on the MLS? I'm not sure I, I understand the question. You understand what I mean? 
Not really. I, he, before he had asked, how come all the real estate people got the vacant homes on MLS? I guess he's running across vacant homes on MLS. Why would they be there? But well, well if a house is vacant and it's listed with a realtor, that really doesn't mean anything. Um, you'll you'll have both. You'll have people that are living in their list. You have vacants that are listed. Some of them going to be foreclosures. Some of them are not. So that's not all of them by no means. They're just a, a very small number of them. Um, Instagram is down. All right, I started back. But um, so that that's that's not going to uh, that's not going to matter at all. Okay, the last Instagram question before it went down was in regards to bandit signs. Um, he says he's handwriting his signs and his signs are fading. How can he prevent that? Um, if your signs are fading, I'm gonna try to go back up on Instagram. I can't do the, uh, the uh, what's the name anymore though? The story anymore. But anyway, um, if your signs are actually fading, uh, then that means you're really using the wrong type of marker. But I would recommend printed signs are so cheap right now, man, that uh, I would I would highly recommend that um, you just pay for some printed signs. I know a dirt cheap sign with Adrian posted that information in the chat. I think you can get a hundred. You didn't? I will though. <laughs> you can get a. You, you post it. We can post it in the. Well, just post it in the chat. It's fine. Um, but uh, you can get 120 signs for, I'm sorry, you can get 100 signs for like 120 bucks shipped to your door, one color, um, uh, nine by 24 in size. I recommend horizontal flutes if you're going to hang signs like I do it, you know. So come on, we, we're 120 bucks. You can deliver pieces at night. Uh, I don't know if you have a car, but Uber, whatever, man, to raise that money. We're not talking about a lot of money. I know. Everybody's situation is the same, but at the end of the day, we're talking about 120 bucks. You have to borrow from six people, $20. Um, you see what I'm saying? So I would recommend, strongly recommend doing it. Print it. Now, that you, I have older videos where I did handwritten, but they are older videos. But banded signs are so cheap right now. Uh, print it. And I just strongly just recommend them over uh, handwritten for sellers. Now, for buyers, uh, you could do handwritten, but normally they're going to generate a lot of calls. You know, you don't need to do that many. So, all right, off-roader on YouTube asks, "What would you do if the seller's tenants won't let you in to show the house? They keep coming up with excuses." Oh, man, you got a problem there, man. But uh, problems normally lead, lead into greater deals. You know, as far as price, you just have to make it work. Uh, you, you, you're going to have to just give them an incentive. Uh, they, they're going to probably have to move out. Uh, the tenants are, you got to give them an incentive, tell them, let them know, hey, I'm going to buy this house. Um, at the end of the day, you're going to probably have to move. Well, you will have to move according to the laws. Why not let me make it easy for you? I'll pay you. Uh, Adrian, you went down? Oh, shit. I'm here. You just I don't have the video. All right, hold on. All right. Okay. Okay, yeah. All right, so, uh, but yeah, so anyway, um, what, was, what was I saying? So yeah, just 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 give them an incentive. I had to pay, you know, to get this lady, but I get this lady out of a house, but she, you know, she wasn't gonna get her money until she moved out, you know, so um, make it work. You know, but again, it needs to be a very attractive deal for you to go that go through that type of uh, those type of trouble dealing with some tenants. Oh, they're going to probably be hard to get out of there. All right, um, sell by owner. Seller is looking for a lease to own deal. Is there any way around this to get them to sell outrightly, or is that motivated seller? You saying is that a motivated seller? I can't, I can't, I couldn't, I didn't get the last right, part. That they want to do a lease to own deal, and um, they were asking, is there a way to get them to sell outrightly, or is that basically just a non motivated seller? That's just not motivated. Yeah, if they don't want to sell, um, and 
know, you don't want to do a lease, any type of lease or anything. Um, what they want to lease it back from you is what they're saying. Uh, that's not clear. Okay. But, but assuming that they don't, uh, again, you know, you don't let them control <laughs> the deal. You have to control the deal, you know, at the end of the day. So. All right. Let's see here. Sticking with YouTube. Uh, let's see here. I'm, well, no, we're not going to go with that. We've already asked that. If I'm talking to a seller and they're asking for a thousand dollar EMD, should I continue with the deal? If um, most motivated sellers don't talk in those terms, asking for an EMD and all that stuff. Um, but if you don't have it, um, it's just that, you know, that's easy. Uh, but again, uh, I said it three or four times a night, you got to control the seller. You got to do it your way or the highway, period. You know, there's no way around that in the, in the wholesale position. They can ask for whatever they want, but you can turn down whatever you want to also. Next, you know, it just that's the word that the, your most common may even become your favorite word is next. All right, let's see here. You ever find properties owned by investors? Any advice when dealing with those types? They're going to normally be a little bit more difficult in the sense if they're if they're well, I say that you know because a lot of landlords are quote, quote unquote are investors, and I deal with a lot of you know landlords or whatever. But if you're talking about guys that buy a lot of houses, you know, and continue to buy a lot of houses, they normally gonna be difficult to deal with. But if somebody's got one or two houses or whatever, you know, sometimes those are gonna be a better deal because they just tired of the business. So you, you're gonna deal with a lot of investors, you know, more, probably more small time investors though, what I mean. All right. Um, do you always pay for foreclosure lists? Do you do any probate or tax delinquents? Well, foreclosure list, um, you know, people have this perception, and I guess it's just a good, uh, good marketing that foreclosures, oh, it's foreclosure, only I know about it. <laughs> Don't you think that's what people think? Yeah. When they hear foreclosure, or they just automatically think it's a deal. You know, guys, the internet, you know, that, that may, may have used to be the case, but now all foreclosures are online, so there's no list that you need to buy. Just pull, you just go online and pull up, pull it up on, on Zillow or any of those sites like that. So uh, as far as a probate list, um, yeah, you could, you could probably access that through your courthouse or whatever. Not my thing because I don't have the patience for it. I just do absentee lists and it encompasses a lot of different situations or potential motivated sellers. So, but you know, I, that, that's me. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you just, you know, there are a lot of ways to go about it. It's not my thing. Okay, well, what do you think about tax lien certificates? Is there money in that end of real estate? Um, well, yeah, if you understand uh, your laws for your state, you know, it could be very tricky, you know, understanding that redemption period and, you know, it just depends on what your goals are. You're trying to just get the quick return as far as if they redeem it at any point and you get the, the return and on my state is like 12% or whatever, then yeah. But if you're trying to uh, obtain a property as far as ownership, there's a process that you have to go through. And depending on what state you're in, it can be a very long process and a little a little expensive to uh, actually get ownership of the property. Now, what a lot of people would do is if they want to uh, somewhat capitalize on as much as possible, they'll take whatever ownership that provides and uh, they'll rent the properties out, you know. But, you know, again, you just have to understand the risk involved. But the main thing is understanding totally the laws in your state and how that works and what different uh, phases of the tax certificate slash tax deed or whatever it's called, what phases it goes through as far as the owner being able to get uh, ownership. Uh, right. redeem the, I say ownership, redeem the property. Okay, let's see here. Jonathan Rawls wants to know how many wholesales do you do per month now? Do you still put out bandit signs yourself or do you pay someone? Well, as far as the number of deals that I do, um, anywhere from, I guess, say three to six, seven, something like that. Um, and um, I've been ramping up here a lot lately uh, because I figured out, you know, because I wasn't really doing what I need to do as far as signs and marketing. I've been putting a lot of energy into that uh, lately. So I'm trying to get those numbers up well above that. And then also going to extend it to some other markets on the residential side, which is really the first time I've done it outside of doing a couple of deals in Memphis. But 
as far as putting out the banner signs myself, what I do now is I pick up this little guy um, and uh, I just drive him around. He jumps out, you know, puts out the signs or whatever. Uh, I found it to be more efficient. I can do it every day or whatever, or enough days during the week. And uh, we can get a lot of comments. I get, you know, get uh, quite a few calls now. So uh, compared to when I was just doing it myself, because I, you know, I saw it, saw it step away from it in the sense that I wasn't just doing what I need to do. So it makes it easier. And then I can still conduct a lot of business by phone, you know, through your smartphone or whatever, by driving him around, just a little bit more efficient. Cost me a little more, but it pays off or whatever. So then he's a young guy, he needs an opportunity or whatever. And so um, I'm just glad that he, he called me every morning and asked me, are we working today? So in speaking of bandit signs, uh, Jody Ross wants to know, is putting bandit signs in neighborhoods a good idea? Well, you just don't want to go crazy with bandit signs just on all the main drags. You have to know your area because the worst thing you want to have is put out signs and they all come down. Um, I, I do a lot of signs with their neighborhoods. Matter of fact, down in your hood, uh, AP yesterday, putting out a few. So maybe that's why you got that call yesterday, I mean today. Or whatever. So, um, uh, but yeah, you want to put signs out within within the actual neighborhood. What I try to do is put signs out streets that enter onto a main drag, like the stop sign, not really on the main drag where a lot of traffic, but streets the side streets. I guess you would call and they you know just tie them on a stop sign right quick and boom, on to the next. All right. How many? Mm, Let's see here. Where would you recommend I get my direct mail list? And that's from IG. Uh, Listsource.com or melissadata.com. Uh, I have videos on that, but uh, though, and if you go to YouTube and do a certain sure others have videos also. But uh, listsource.com, that's listsource.com and or melissadata.com. All right. And should you start marketing wholesale without a buyer's list? Yeah. Yes. You know, buyers are easy, man. Buyers, it's not hard to give away money. It is difficult to get people to give you money. Those are sellers. Focus on the harder part, finding great deals. You find great deals, it is not difficult to get someone to pay you to move out of the way. That's basically what they're doing. Okay. How many commercial deals do you deal with on a monthly basis? Just curious. Uh, that's a different animal there. Uh, so much time for someone, but I got one of my students uh, that's helping me out a lot with that. Uh, he, well, commercial students. Uh, helping me out a lot with that part of it. And um, so I really want to ramp that up. Uh, maybe can get another student. Uh, which he's full time. He's he's a full time residential wholesaler, so um, the income is there for him to be able to put the time in to do it or whatever. And um, trying to do a little bit more of that with with students is um, letting them do some of the things that I don't like doing, and we just partner. So um, so I have something to report on that soon. You know, possibly with him if he wants to come on online. Most of, the, most of these guys don't want to come online when they do stuff. The ones that you see, they're happy to do it. I'm glad that they do. But most of the people, you know, they, they don't they don't want that type of exposure, which I, which I understand that I probably wouldn't do it myself. So, so it's no big deal. All right, guys, we're a quarter after the seven o'clock outer hour. And hopefully no one's just now joining us. But if so, go ahead and do a little house cleaning questions are slowing down a bit um yeah we're, we're glad guys we're glad you came out and we had a little technical difficulties on the producers end, and we'll take care of that issue down the road <laughs> throw me all the way under the bus okay uh, but uh, anyway when you see the replay of this um again uh, share it uh make sure you subscribe to the youtube channel turn on the notifications so you are alerted when new videos are uploaded by me and when Adrian and I go live each week on these flipinars. Uh, if you need a coach, um, step-by-step courses on wholesaling houses, wholesaling apartments, flipping, baking commercial buildings, 
simply go to flipman.net and you can see what the options are there. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at flipman.net. That's flipman, D-O-T-N-E-T. Snapchat, the same, flipman, D-O-T-N-E-T. And on Twitter, uh, the flipman. So I think we got this weekend. Uh, AP, I really appreciate you showing up again this week and everyone that has done the same. And we'll see you guys next week. Make sure you share it. Bring a friend over. We're trying to crack the 200, the 200 uh, uh, watching now, Mark, uh, with, the, with all three of your platforms, your Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. So uh, share it. And uh, we will see you guys on the flip, on the flip side. side. <laughs> <laughs>